Staff Sergeant Timothy Nunn. I'm a training NCO with the 223rd Military Police Company of the Kentucky Army National Guard. I'm the recipient of the Distinguished Service Cross for my actions in Salman Pak, Iraq, in March of 2005. Growing up in a small town, uh, I never thought I'd ever find myself in the situation that I was really in. In the back of your mind, you always prepare for it, but you think, oh, that'll really never happen. We actually started dating. He was a junior in high school. I was a sophomore. Got married when we were 20 years old. And then at 26 one day, he just up and out of the blue called and said, hey, I'm joining the National Guard. <laughs> a proud family tradition of service in the military had called this small town boy from America's heartland into the service of his country. I always wanted to lead soldiers on the battlefield. And I always wanted to serve my country. We just had our eldest son, Samuel. And uh, right after that, I thought, you know, if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. As a military policeman, Timothy Nine would be deployed to South America and Bosnia-Herzegovina. But it would be a war that would take this husband, and now father of two, far from the rolling hills of southern Indiana, into a dangerous and forbidding land. When Timothy Nine finished his first deployment in Iraq, he volunteered for a second. When he wanted to go back, I knew that that's where his heart was. I knew he felt that he needed to be there. It was an exciting time because you're getting to go do your job you've trained to for a long time. Uh, but you are leaving family, and that, that's hard to do. As a squad leader in the 617th Military Police Company, Timothy Nine would be responsible for keeping a 20-mile stretch of highway south of Baghdad free of enemy activity. The local anti-Iraqi forces, they know where the best places are to uh, set up for ambushes or IEDs. Sergeant Nine's squad of eight men and two women spent countless hours in their three up-armored Humvees planning for any eventuality and familiarizing themselves with every potential ambush site and escape route on the highway. And on Palm Sunday 2005, his team's preparation would be put to the test. Just after midday, a large convoy that Nine's squad was shadowing came under attack from a well-organized enemy force. Nine ordered his squad into contact with the enemy. When we first come on scene, the fire shifted from the convoy literally right onto us. As many as 50 anti-Iraqi forces had taken up positions in an adjacent orchard and dry canal system, well hidden and protected by berms, trees, and irrigation ditches. This video, captured at the scene, shows nine squad under heavy fire, speeding into contact with the enemy. From our previous reconnaissance, I knew there was a road that it was adjacent to the field and that we'd be able to, to proceed onto that road and hopefully outflank them. By turning down the familiar road, nine squad took heavy fire from both sides. As insurgents moved up from their positions, the squad's pair of 50 caliber machine guns laid down massive fire, eliminating the cameraman while Staff Sergeant Nine dismounted his disabled Humvee. I looked down about 200 meters from our position. I realized that I've got at least two soldiers shot and they're about to maybe be overrun. We're not going anywhere, we've got to fight. Realizing the enemy had strength in numbers and position, Nine calmly assessed the situation and acted decisively. Through a hail of enemy automatic weapons fire, he ran to a 10-foot high berm along the road and eliminated an enemy fighting position with a hand grenade. The squad medic, Sergeant Jason Mike, repelled the enemy as he administered first aid to the wounded MPs. It was a Rambo scene. He had two weapons in his hand. He's shooting a M249 light machine gun in one direction and an M4 rifle in the other direction. And he's looking back and forth. I can remember this day. At that point, Nine yelled back to Sergeants Leanne Hester and Dustin Morris that they would have to take the fight to the enemy in the dry canal system. I remember looking in their eyes and seeing soldiers that are still calm. They're still confident that we're going to succeed here. I said, are you ready? And we jumped into the canals. Three of the squad had been wounded, but the team covered Hester and Nine as they engaged the enemy in a close combat maneuver that relied on discipline and teamwork. Sergeant Hester and I had stacked up. We just kept pushing. She's shooting over my right shoulder as I'm shooting. I can still hear the rounds whipping past us. I can still see him kicking up in front of us. Sergeants Hester and Nine methodically eliminated the enemy threat in the trenches that day and with their squad defeated a large and organized force that, had it been successful, would have surely resulted in kidnappings and murder and the destruction of an important supply convoy. 27 enemy had been eliminated, six wounded and one captured. The seized material looked like a small armory. 
For his extraordinary heroism in combat, Sergeant Timothy Nine was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. There's only been, to my knowledge, five of these awards awarded to soldiers for valor in combat in the last five years. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at a true American hero. It's, it's really humbling. I really believe I'm just a guy that did a job. Being in the Army is absolutely the best thing that ever happened to me.